I'll probably get pneumonia and they'll they'll put on my certificate that I died of. Let's go for the wild look today. Yeah, yeah whatever. A bit of fringe I still have left. Uh, I look like something from the 1920s now. Buster Keaton or something. Only just a straw hat. But uh, yes, here we are. Here we are. Uh, I want to talk to you about the, why the parallel society is basically all we have left. And I'll tell you why. It's, and it's not, this is not from an anonymous point of view, like we're refugees or something. It's just basically a pragmatic approach to human psychology. That, uh, you know, when you know these things, you understand things better. You know, that's why I constantly go on about mythology and archetypes and gods and pagan gods and all this kind of thing. Because the archetype allows you to transition through the slings and fortunes of a slings and arrows of outrageous fortune in life now let me give you young men out there that are on the who are going into the world to find women okay men who are looking for a particularly a man who are looking for a, a proper girlfriend and a proper relationship. And I, and, and I hate that word relationship because relationships sound... You know, you have a relationship with your fucking phone. You have a, a relationship with your wheelie bin. You know, uh, I don't have relationships. I have love affairs, okay? So those of you... Those men who are in seeking to have love affairs rather than this awful relationship thing. That's a, that, I think it's a black magic thing to say that. So a man who wants to have a love affair, to be in a loving... Uh, coupling with a, a with a with a with a beautiful with a many beautiful women with a woman you know a happy relationship. Let me give you the the greatest piece of advice about entering into a relationship with a woman. You can take this to the bank. You will not. You could read all the relationship books in the world, watch all the YouTube videos, watch all the, and every woman will totally agree with me if she's honest. All the. The, the, the YouTube videos by saying, I have to get yourself a woman, you know, all this kind of thing, right? And let me explain it to you. Even gay men who have never kissed a woman on the lips will tell you this is what a straight man has to do if he knows, if he wants to be with this woman. It's one simple rule. If she's still going on about some, the previous fella or someone how to had pissed her off that means she's still in a relationship she's with him, not with you. So if you meet him and all you hear about is like, this bastard did this to me, this bastard did that to me. Now, initially, if it was really bad, like he slapped her around and stuff like that. Yeah, totally understandable, listen to that. But if it's something like uh, she, he blocked her on YouTube or he put her in the friend zone or he just ran off her little girl uh, and it's, you know, you say, well, you keep an eye on that. If it's still going on after a couple of weeks, she is not attracted to you. It's as simple as that. Let me tell you about women, right? When a woman loves you, okay, you, she, for a whole past emotional relationship, except for her children and her family members, is erased. All the previous men never existed. She is, you become uh, the star at the center of her solar system. She revolves around you. And if it doesn't matter how bad the previous guy was, she won't he she won't even remember his name after a couple of weeks because she is in love with you. She loves you, okay? She loves you. And then you know you've got a girl, you've got a woman who is definitely suited to you for a love affair, okay? If she's going on with emotional intensity against this previous guy or this guy she can't stand anymore, if it's full of hatred, that hatred and that revulsion that she's ex expressing is not a gift to you and your manhood and how wonderful you are compared to that piece of shit. What she's really doing is her hatred of the previous guy is directly proportional to how unattractive to you, to you, that she is. You understand? So the more she loves you, the less his is uh, his energy, his charisma is affecting her, or whatever. The, the you know the the more <clears throat> the more she, she that he's that the more that she is still going on about him, the the more your charisma on her is failing. You know, it's a bit like any fucker who can, if you if you're thirty years old and you haven't figured this out after a few a few relationships, you you should probably consider getting a sex doll or, be, or becoming gay. 
because you, you, you just don't, you haven't figured out women yet. Women are, when a woman loves you, right, it's, it's, you, you cannot, you know, like, you become almost like, uh, I don't know what it is, almost a spiritual event for them. They will absolutely love you like you would not believe, okay? And it's when they're going on about the past one. Now, it depends. Like, when a relationship goes bad and ends up, that's okay. You know, that's that's fine. And and, and, there's, and there's all the repercussions. And, like, maybe after two or three months, you go, you know, fucker, he really did hurt me. But, you know, that would be the extreme of it. If she goes on a smear campaign against him, if she is still going on after a year, after two years, if she can't take her mind off him, and especially if he did nothing bad to her. You know, I could understand if he beat her up took the kids off her and that's and she still feels that way but if it's because of something like you just said i'll oh, get out of my life you're annoying me uh, or something like that that's that that's that's testimony to your failure in being her man you always remember that and if you can't accept that you are a cook now let's talk about this that's a why why i brought that up here is because i don't normally give dating advice but uh it's a beautiful segue now, any woman will tell you that's true. And any woman who's watching this in the comments below, when you fall in love, the previous guys are just... Like, I have a friend a friend whose sister has married a fella, and she's totally in love. And the previous husband is literally waging war against her. And it's like, whatever, I don't care. I'm in love with this new fella. And that's, that's being in love. That's, that is being in love. That's when she, is, that's when she loves you. Okay, but a, a year down the road, she goes, that fucking bastard, I'm going to get him. And, he, and she's no legal, financial or any other ties to him. He's living rent-free space in her head. That means she doesn't love you. She doesn't. She may like you. She may, you know, have a sexual a thing with you, but she'll never love you. It's, it, it hasn't stopped after a few months. It's never going to stop. You, and especially if this was a fellow before that. You know, these are these women. The borderlines are the ones with every relationship. The previous guy was a fucking asshole, a, a, a lunatic, right? Uh, but the uh, she, if she, if she cannot forget you. Uh, him, she is not. She'll never be in love with you. She might like you. She might have fun with you, but she'll never love you. Okay, and any man with an ounce of sense knows that's the truth. You know, like I, I've had women that relationships when I was much younger with women and they were doing things like the, the ex and like after still talking after two or three weeks I wouldn't call them anymore and they'd be like why don't you call them anymore I'm sick of hearing about that fucker you know if you're with me you're with me I'm not I'm not interested in having doing a threesome with him in your fucking mind you know that kind of thing while the two of us are together that's basic male heterosexual relationship dating advice 101 even a gay man knows that who's never kissed a woman on the lips now how does this bring us to the normies and the lockdown very important okay now this is why i'm telling you to, you know i've been years i've been telling you to stop trying to wake others up most people are just cheese heads who will just follow what they're told on tv they'll never change there is a middle ground, and it's not as big as you think it is, of sentient or semi-sentient normies who, if push comes to shove, can be nudged into consciousness. Okay, let's put it that way. Okay. Now, those those people, uh, you don't, you still don't try and evangelize them. This whole Christian thing, this is a weakness when you go, you know, to try and save them. That's a Christian weakness. Okay. That's the weakness inherent in, inherent in the Christian mindset that they have. You you you're, you're so, you must submit to the to the textbook, to the to the to the canon, to the law, to the commandments, and then you must proselytize to others. That's a weakness. That's 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 like um, you know that's not the same thing as like what you do is you build up your charisma and your attractiveness, uh, with your arguments, with your behavior. 
and if they know this the control system and what you then do is you the others will the ones who are semi sentient will come along and say hey, that bunch of that bunch of people are, are anti lockdown and everything and they they seem pretty cool I'm going to join them we had an exact we had a beautiful example of that in Cork City God bless the people of Cork who came out for that match and what the, the Irish media the next day literally was having psychiatric episodes because the people in Cork behaved so well looked well were multi-ethnic and they could not portray them as far right or anything anymore so by means of their charisma the people in the people's republic of cork and and, and recently galway and dublin were voted by count condnas travelers the two most friendly cities in the world no 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 cork is way more friendlier than, than dublin dublin's not even friendly at all they're only friendly there because they want your money and i'm saying that as a dub i mean they're friendly but they mean the tourist wise and stuff like that and uh, in galway it's just uh, that's just like you know it's all fake and phony but uh cork is like the last vestige of what irish urban life used to be like when i was growing up and through the power of their charisma by how, who they were, how they looked, how they came across. The Irish media and the Irish establishment had a psychiatric episode in that they could not portray them as monsters. And that was a huge fucking lesson for all of you right out there, okay? There was no one banging bongos and drums and stuff like that. Now, the thing in Dublin, that lunatic and asshole with the rocket, he gave... He gave there was five... There was, looking at there was five or six thousand people at the Dublin protest. They... Um, those he he was the what the media wanted to say oh look they're all like him they're all like him now <clears throat> the normies now this is the whole thing you have to understand folks right that the normies have fallen in love with the new normal they haven't been duped into it they haven't been they haven't been deceived into it really because they went by their own you know you hear Christian Morris talk about Sergeant Howie and the Wicker Man, a fool who came of his own, a willing fool who came of his own choice. And that's what they are, okay? They are, they don't remember the old world before social distance, lockdown, vaccines, masks, and all the others because they have fallen completely in love with the new normal. They are completely in love. Look at the, look at the picture that I put up, the pro, the, the thumbnail picture I put up for this video of the the guy in America with that complete body biohazard suit going to the supermarket. That that is someone who has fallen in love. That's an expression of total and utter love for the new normal. And when they're in love like that, they have forgotten the old world. Now those of us, right, who are going, oh fuck, I want to go back to when I had the the festivals. You know, I want to go back to when I went to, when I was putting five euro notes down the front of a stripper's knickers. I want to go back to when I could go shopping and people didn't jump out of the way when uh, I was walking by. I want to go back to when I could play rugby and my football with my friends in the park and get all beat up. I want to go back to how, to th how you could meet, up a, meet a person in a nightclub and be snogging them five minutes later. I want to go back to that world. Well, we're like the bitch who's in the relationship with the cook, who's still going on about the past relationship. We're not in love with the new world. You understand now why I brought that analogy in? We're not in love with the new normal. We're still in love with the old normal. You understand? We're still in love with it. And we cannot get it out of our heads. Now, there are people who go along with this, and they're the same way. I just wish things would go back to normal. They're semi-sentient, okay? They're ones we could, through force of our charisma, but not by through forcing it upon them, by just by sheer us looking as, as fabulous as we are, and being as fabulous as we are. And I don't mean that in a gay sense, but it could be if you're a gay man, you could be fabulous. But I mean that in that sense. That just by, look, just by being yourself, you can get people to be drawn to you. It's not a magical power. It's just, it's, it's, it's basically your nervous system is an imbalance, okay? And people will listen and they will say, well, that's okay. Now, what this, now their new tactic is to say that, you know, this is, we'll talk about this a bit, a bit later. We've got, there's lots of waffling coming today, folks, from, uh, from me but anyway so um you'll always know that you know you always know that if, if there's still an attachment for the old world the old paradigm the old love affair 
it, you know, it, it will be brought into the new one, okay? And that's where we are now. I don't want to wear a fucking mask. I don't want to be vaccinated when I go to see a band. I don't want to. I want to go back to when football people went to football and see football in stadiums and stadiums are full. I want to go back to that. I want to go back to the pub, you know? I want to go back to putting a five-year note down in front of a stripper's knickers. I want to go back to all that stuff I used to do and never harmed anybody. And uh, we're still, that's because we're still in love with the old world. And rightly so, because we had a lot of freedom back then. But the ones who go around, so many of the normies and the cheeseheads now have fallen madly in love with the new normal. They, they, are, they, are like the, they are like your 14, the average male today in most Western countries, especially in Ireland, the land of weak, weak men and cowards. The average middle-aged man here has fallen in love with the new normal in Ireland. Like your 14 year old daughter who's met this dirt bag down the street, and you're saying, Oh, Jesus Christ, how did of all the fucking lads on the street, she had to end up with him, you know? And like, Oh, fucking hell, if he gets her pregnant, Jesus Christ, I'm stuck with the fucker forever, you know? That father, right, is us, right? Is us. And we're looking at the cheese heads and the normies going, They're actually fucking in love with their slavery. And if they fucking fall in love with their slavery, they'll take the rest of us down with them. That's what it's like. And with the, the father explained to his teenage daughter, 16, 17, 18, whatever, well, she should be out of quiet. Well, that, we're just, it goes on, I see middle-aged women like that. But it's like, you know, you know look, look, you know, the worst thing he can do is go, I don't want you seeing that fucker again, okay? So then the, her reaction to that is even stronger hormonal attachment to, you know, Anto and Deco down the road. And then you, she will get pregnant by him. You know, the thing is that the thing with the father is, is to, if a father wants to do that, you, go, you just say to her, okay, she's into him down the road. I will become emotionally unattached to her and she'll miss me more than she wants him. That doesn't mean he's being cold or cruel, but it's like if he, if he, if, if, if the Anto and Deco down the road lose their charisma, the dirt bag down the road loses his charisma if the father goes whatever suddenly anto is not so special but what if he, the father goes I, can, I don't want you seeing that dirt bag loser she'll elevate him to the level of a god the same rule applies to the lockdown enormies if we say to them you're a fucking idiot for doing social distancing and mask at this stage you're a, you're a fucking idiot for you know, do, doing everything they told, it'll only make them fall, fall, fall more madly in love. More madly in love with the, with the, the new normal. <coughs> They'll never, that's, that, that's because we're, we're not dealing with men today, we're dealing with little girls. You see, now you know why your pagan ancestors were murdered by the Christians and the Muslims. Now you know why. Because to they you know a christian would say to them to that fucker that i have on my thumbnail forgive them father for, forgive them for they know what not what they do a pagan would say that is a man without honor and a man without honor seeks to bring others down to his submission you know that's what that's that's why paganism wins in the in the case of like standing up for your freedom christianity will always be about love thy enemy no, no, It'd be, in paganism, honor comes first, honor. And so you won't, you won't dishonor yourself by walking up to them people and saying, you're a fool for being like this. You're, you, you dishonor yourself when you try to convert them. You, you honor yourself by presenting the facts and then walking away and allowing it to stew out there and find who has the honor to accept it and who is the weakling who rejects it and runs forward into their love affair with the new normal. You see, this is the greatest education ever thing. This is the greatest education ever thing, you know, that we're, we're dealing, the reason why so many male males today, grown men today, are walking around in bio suits with three face masks, with the eyeball on the side of their head terrified, and their lizard brain flying for survival, is because these men are girls. They are teenage girls madly in love with the new normal. They have no honor. So if you see a fella who's got like all wrapped up gloves, masks, and, and you ever notice how it's always the biggest hard man in town is the biggest coward? 
what you're seeing is that he's now he's been submitted. He's been burlesqued into what he is on the archetypal level. A teenage girl smitten and in love with the loser down the road. Okay, And the loser down the road in this case is the Bill Gateses, the NGOs, the government ministers and all the other lockdown specialists who have us all in this position. And uh, you see this is another thing too. The Christians used to, we see horrible TV shows like Vikings where no one can act. When they go to battle, you see them committing all their troops, including their women, the shield maidens, which didn't exist. Not in that case, anyway. Uh, that, you know, to attack uh, the other side. Now, no army sends their entire force in to attack another side because that's called uh, annihilation. If you look at the history, if you read the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles, there's very, very interesting discussions, documents written about negotiations between the Danes, the Vikings, and the Angles. And often they would, what would happen is they would, the Angles, the, the Vikings would, would approach a town. They'd send their berserkers out and a leader out to a village or a town or a community. And the, the hard men of the Angles and stuff like that would go to meet them. In both cases, because they were both pagan, no, the, the Angles wouldn't have been pagan, that's sorry. They might have been, depends on the time period, but they probably wouldn't have been. Uh, <clears throat> it depends who they met in Europe. There would be a negotiation, because they knew that if a fight broke out, one side would totally win and one side would totally lose. And your side could just as easily totally lose as win. And because they didn't believe you went to see baby Jesus in heaven, they would they would have negotiations. So you see them in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles, it's very interesting, and there's also in the Irish uh, ones on the, I've got one on the Danish invasion, the Danish, the Danes in Ireland, written by Irish sources, and they say the same things. The Danes, or the Norwegians, that's what we call them, they didn't call them Vikings, we call them that now, would go into a, an English or an Irish settlement, and they would say, we will be we will be back in a couple of weeks and we will want money and equipment and whatever you have to give us maybe women and they would stand each other down both sides knowing that a fight was a bad idea because they wouldn't know exactly how many were on the other side so there would be they, they would not want to deplete their army completely and so if they came back a week later chances are that the other ones would say Here's a bag of gold, a few bits of artwork and uh, manuscripts, and uh, here's a here here you know here's the local slot you can have her as a as a as a, as a prize, and then they, that that would conclude negotiations and they'd walk away, and then the, and then the area had been officially conquered by the Danes, or the Norwegians. They didn't always go in. You see those stupid TV show, but like you have huge battles where all killing each other the last man. That did not happen. Because they had to, they could not deplete their forces completely. Because you don't know, no, it's not like playing soldiers as a child. You don't deplete your soul. So it's the same thing with this, okay? They, we, we don't deplete our complete energies on things completely like protesting. Yes, there's an element to that, but you don't make it violent. It does not work until you're pushed to the point where you have no other choice. And we're not there yet, folks. We're not there yet. So don't be thinking that, okay? Those of you just want to be heroes. If you look at the history of how this country came to the past, it was about, it, it took the better part of probably 40 years, starting with the Home Rule Bill in the late 1800s, and it took all the way to the War of Independence. There was 40 years of negotiation before the Irish uh, independence movement said, fuck it, let's go to war. And uh, real war, and uh, you know that we're not, you know, we're not in that situation yet. We can still negotiate, okay? And negotiation in, in the modern day is done with charisma. It's done with things like the be our, our people who are capable of reaching others being given a voice, being given a voice, and then they will automatically attract the ones who are in a dysfunctional or a fail. You see the same thing again. There's ones who are going to be in the game playing the normie game right but they're they're like i don't like this anymore the lockdown has gone on too long it doesn't seem right that countries like sweden are open their their love affair with the, the with the control system with the lorona it's failing okay and they're prime not for us to walk over and say come and join us but to like just make our case 
as we make it like they did down in Cork. And you know they'll go and they'll go. You know those those people in Cork were right. They were right. And you know the the, the media calling them far right and all this stuff is bullshit. They're not. They're they're just like me. Charisma. Charisma. Okay. Now speaking of the conspiracy thing, they're starting to play this again. They've stopped the Irish media. Have stopped the far right thing. And now they've gone to a conspiracy theory. But they're doing it in a kind of an evangelical Christian way. They're like, you know, if your friend has become a Christian conspiracy theorist, love them back into the prison. You know, this kind of thing. And it's all, this is all a big cash cow for NGOs. And, and you know, non-government organizations. and quangos. Quasi whatever government organizations. And these are just, this is the government. These are, these, this is the, this is the, the real government. The real government is not your politicians or even your civil servants. The real government is the NGOs. Now, how the NGOs function is they will develop, they call themselves policy think tanks, okay? And the policy think tank will have the agenda that the politicians want, you know, anything from, like, you know, throwing us into gas ovens to, uh, you know, m making 14-year-old boys be able to get trans tra transgender operations without asking their parents' permission. And because uh, it's fashionable, and what they do is they then, uh, rather than the politician standing on stage and saying, "I, you know, like Michal Martin or Leo Varadkar or Boris Johnson or Joe Biden or, you know, anyone," stands on a stage and goes, instead of them standing on the stage and going, "We believe that fourteen-year-old men." should become transgender. That way we prevent a future revolutionary process from taking us over. Essentially, we're castrating the males growing forward so they present no re revolutionary... <coughs> <coughs> no revolutionary threat going forward. A politician, if they went on the stage and said that, they wouldn't get away with them. So what they do is they get the policy think tank, the NGOs, to stand on stage and say things like, um, you know, young people should be allowed to transition. It's a, a biological right and everything like this. And then they will get all, they'll surround themselves with corrupt academics like the ones at Trinity College who w wage psychological warfare on behalf, on the Irish people on behalf of the COVID zero cult. And uh, these evil academics in tandem with journalists they are often in these things, retired politicians, some CEOs, uh, former CEOs as well as there's uh, people involved in charities. You know, the, the, the biggest psychopaths you'll ever meet in your life are ones that run charities, big charities, okay? And they're the biggest psychopaths on earth and uh, because they're preying on human misery to line their own pockets. And they often are very involved in NGOs as well. They often move between... Talk. Same with trade union leaders always join NGOs as well because they're all evil as well because they only care about their, their union members and not about the, the, the rest of society. They walk over... it. You know, the, the trade union movement in Ireland with all its red flags and all its socialism would walk over a starving, ch a starving child dying on the streets of Dublin uh, and step over them while holding an equality and socialism banner. Because the kid on the feet, the ground that's dying of starvation, his, his father isn't in the union. That's what the unions are like in this country, and your country as well. The unions are pure evil these days. And they're often involved in these NGOs as well. Now, these NGOs will, put the, will, will basically put the thing out there that young teenage boys should not only be, you know, be allowed to transition if they want to, but should be encouraged through the education system and the mass media and so on. And then this policy working document eventually finds its way into a bill, into law. And all the time you can say to yourself, it was that politician who brought that in. Because he's not, you don't have one video of him or her making a speech advocating this horror that's been fostered upon society. It's the NGO that did it, the real government behind the government. And so he can go through history as a great guy who, who did some great things for us, but didn't destroy, you know, didn't, you know, implement a system of national castration for young boys so they wouldn't grow up to be revolutionaries to overtake the government. And that's what that was really about. This is to say, this is a, this is, they're just eunuchs. That's, that's what they're doing. They're creating eunuchs who won't fight back. And uh, castrati. These are the, and these ones who like, you know, who, you know I, again, I have nothing against transgenders and people who transition. Uh, adults who want to transition and transgender, 
I mean, good. I understand the whole thing that you can have a man inside a woman's body and vice versa. We all know that's scientifically true and real. And, and how, those people should be helped and given all the sympathy in the world. I'm talking about this fashionable transitioning. Our kids, a lot of the teenage boys who are transitioning now are actually gay. And this, this, is, the, this is where the gay, move, the gay rights and the gay movement people have failed miserably. These are young men who are having fe homosexual feelings. And they think that they're, they're, tur they're instead they should be girls. And they would have a normal, healthy, happy life as a homosexual. Are now having their penis cut off and being turned into girls so they can commit suicide a few years later. And go through all the, the, very, the great physical and mental difficulties of transitioning. And that's because of these NGOs. Okay? Now these NGOs are pure evil. They're pure evil and they're loaded with psychopaths. Now, for instance, in our, I'll give you an example, and it's going on in your country as well. There's currently a bill being pushed through here via policy think tanks to basically allow the government to take your property off you if you're not a good citizen. And it's being pushed heavily by uh, Richard Boyd Barrett, the Hollywood actor's son, who you know, gets his, it was, his campaign was funded by Jeremy Irons, his, his brother-in-law, I think, I think, or something like that. And... Uh, he, 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 Jeremy, Iron li Jeremy Irons lives in a castle in the west coast of Ireland. That's how much money he has. So he won't have to worry about his castle being taken away from you. But if the rest of us are not a good citizen, they can seize the family home from us. Look at the bill. It's, it's there. It's going through government. And this was developed by an NGO, so no politician would have its name, no would have connected to it. When they came, how did we ever get a situation where Irish people have their houses taken off them and given to the state? As a national, you know, and this is all part of it. This is all part of it. That was NGOs who started that. <clears throat> Another one is the the hate speech thing, right? Now, if they form the new hate speech, and you know, and and all that, you know, you want to make money in this country, or your Western country, form an NGO with a woke or a liberal agenda, and just wait for the cash to come flying in. Look at the Lincoln Project in USA. These were scumbags within the within the. Republican Party in the USA designed working to take down Trump and uh, not only did, have we discovered that it was a nest of pedophiles and psychopaths which you kind of want to be their, their, their job was basically to keep the, the, the neocons in power in the Republicans not only, the New York Times had an incredible article the other day not only is it a nest of pedophiles and psychopaths <coughs> but something like nearly 50 million dollars of donations including a 500 thousand dollar donation from David Geffen, the record guy, to this NGO, the, the, well it was an NGO really, the Lincoln Project, has basically vanished. So the psychopaths went in, they're going, we hate Trump, we're going to take him down, waited for the money to come flying in from stupid rich people, put it in their pockets, um, sexually assaulted uh, young boys in, in the operation, and then left. And that's how an NGO, NGOs work. So you set yourself up as an NGO, say, we're going to fight racism in, in sport. Sit there, wait for the money to come in, line your pockets, shag each other, and then vanish. And then leave your society in ruins of the cause of it. Now, there's a new one started where they, they, to identify uh, far-right uh, people and individuals in Ireland. Basically, a Gestapo, Stasi-type operation. See, got, because it's an NGO doing it, the Irish government hasn't put a department in charge of it. So they can't say, in the hist future history book can't say, um, oh, you know, we had an NGO, we had a government minister who passed the law and to create a department that, can you believe it, it went after people who were into conspiracies and called them far-right Nazis and made lists and shamed them in public and destroyed their lives. Now, the politician's name won't be on that. The NGO's name will be on that doing it on behalf of the it's so psychopathic that the politicians don't even make totalitarian decisions anymore they pay they, they fund ngos to make the totalitarian decisions on behalf of the politicians so the politicians don't have to live with their name being dirty because of it it's extremely evil and sinister i mean this is this is the world you live in and uh, so this policy that's why when the <coughs> excuse me, when the when the Rona thing, when the Rona thing took off, when the Rona thing took off, immediately, like the Irish government created a a, a working group, Nethet. Okay, this means that in the future, no politician's name will be on that. Only a, only the people. If it, if it turns out to be the greatest catastrophe in the history of this country. 
since independence, Neffet gets the blame, not the politicians who were in power at the time. Leo Varadkar, Michal Martin. It's really nasty business, this. And uh, that's why they get Tony Houlihan, uh, a guy who'd been disgraced by a cervical cancer smear thing. They say to him, how would you like the chance to redeem your name? How would you like the chance we're going you to be the one who will say dad, that's what they're calling him, to save Ireland from the Rona to redeem your name? And he would go, Yeah, yeah, I'd love that. And I mean so that's why in the early days of Neffith there was pictures, artists were commissioned to paint pictures of Tony Hulan, the cervical cancer uh, scandal person, to have him dressed as Superman coming out of a phone box. And the artist who even did it was saying things like, I get women asking me for posters of this. Oh, really? Oh, I, I don't believe you. That was a, a specific spin doctor thing, I think you were told to say. Isn't that true? And uh, so, you know, they specifically mentioned women. What? Uh, it's because women all died in the cervical, the, the, the cervical cancer scandal. And uh, the, the, this is what you're dealing with. This is how devious these people are, you know. And you're calling them by their first name. Ah, Leo. Ah, you know, Michal. Ah, Tony, you know. Ah, Joan, you know. Ah, Jesus, you know. Give us a bit of our freedom there, you know. Simon, you know, this kind of thing. It's, it, these people are spectacular. These people may not be, you know, I don't, I don't believe Michal Martin is an evil man. But these people are part of an evil system. And the evil system is so evil that it doesn't even want to take responsibility for being evil anymore. And that's why it creates NGOs. That's why it creates quangos. So the, the blame is passed off onto them. And this is it's at all, and when this all really began, this began a long time ago. It began, you know, way back with things like long before the climate change things. It began with things like the campaign for nuclear disarmament. You know, that was probably these these people were genuinely worried about a nuclear war. So what better way to undermine NATO than for the, the, the KGB and the Soviet Union to fund groups like CND? And then later Amnesty International and Greenpeace. This is why the Chinese pour money into them. So they this demolish industry in the West. And eventually the West caught up and started creating NGOs and quangos themselves in order to do what the Chinese and the Soviets were doing. So we really are living in a communist world. There's no doubt about that at this point. Now this is the, this is the evil of it. So anyway, this new Quango is going to identify far-right figures. Now, if you look at them, there's a, there, you know, they're, 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 the money is flying in already. And what's a, what's a far-right figure? Well, they was, they've now associated conspiracy theory with far-right. And so, you know, the problem is now the Quango is now creating an emotionality through the mainstream media, which I guess every mainstream media now a journalist could be considered part of the media quango because they don't work for anyone other than the government at this point and the globalists. And so when you say the word globalists, that's code word for Jews. Now, what? I mean, you know, is Bill Gates Jewish? Is uh, Klaus Schwab Jewish? But they're, they're using, they, they talk about, oh, it's the old thing that's anti-Semitic. No, actually, you're the one who's anti-Semitic because we never even considered what religion Gates or Klaus Schwab was until you pointed this out. You see, it's the whole thing of like, they are what they are the worst expression of what they're telling us the worst is. You know, it's like the whole thing. Like I saw this, you know, it's like they're the ones who say, you know, you shouldn't be racist, but, you know, there's, you, there's 50, there's 50, you know, you shouldn't be transphobic, but there's 75 genders and you better be careful every last one of them. You know, it's the same thing. So, Suddenly they're trying to make out that if you say the word globalist, it's code word for Jews. Now I have the most I have been I have taken vicious abuse on the alternative scene for years by saying I don't care about Palestine. I don't care. I've got my own I'm my own country to worry about. Palestinians Palestinians mean nothing to me. I mean good luck to them. I'm sorry that they have someone to have to deal with shit, but I don't care about them or Israel either. And I've also, you know, I'm you know, I've been attacked for saying the Holocaust happened and that anti-Semitism has been the greatest curse of uh, European society in many ways because some truly awful wickedness was done in Europe against Jewish people <coughs> uh, over the centuries. And so because I now say globalists, I'm now, I'm now on the side of the ones that I spent my life fighting. You tell me that's not evil. 
Now, all they have to do is change the terms of meaning. So another one is that anyone interested in conspiracy theorists is, 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 is trying to destroy your life. So therefore, some guy or girl who might be interested in the fake moon landings, you know, I mean, I'm not, I mean, I believe the moon landings happened. Uh, I know they happened, I guess you know, at this point. But um, I, <clears throat> I, uh, I have nothing against people looking into that. I think it's, it's fun. When I was growing up, conspiracy theories were considered fun. When I was a teenager, lots of people were into conspiracy theories because it was considered fun. But you didn't necessarily believe them. Now, nowadays, if somebody watches a documentary about Bigfoot and says, geez, no, I could go Mothman, right? Now, here's me, a fella in Ireland, right? I'm, I've become very interested in recent years in the Mothman thing in West Virginia, right? And I want to, at some point, get out there and make a film about him. So there, because it's a fascinating topic to me as an extension of the folklore and fairy fate and all those things I'm, believe, I'm interested in. So I want to go to West Virginia and I want to film, make a film about Mothman and the Mothman experience that happened in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Because I want to do that out of just a hobby, an interest, a passion, I'm now considered as dangerous as any terrorist because they've taken any belief in conspiracy theories or any belief in paranormal and anything like alien stuff and made and are trying to make the public believe that's more dangerous than an Islamic jihadist driving a truck into a Christmas market in Germany this is what this is how evil these people are and there are groups within the, the EU policy think tank groups who were literally, before the lockdown, involved in identifying Islamic extremists in Europe. You know what they're all doing now? They're on, they're on UFO message boards. They're on conspiracy Bigfoot message boards. They're on message boards about, is Elvis still alive? And they're pointing out and looking at far-right extremists. So what they want this, what these people want this, a world where nobody has any ability to think of anything beyond what the government tells them. If the government tells you something, that is not only what you're to believe, but you're not to believe anything else or think about anything else. Your life begins and ends with government press releases. It's already been an academic press releases. It's already like that with the mainstream journalists. Journalists now for about 20 years have taken government press releases and academic press releases and, and, and written them down verbatim as fact without analyzing, without scrutinizing, without investigating, just taking them as fact and saying, this government press office says this, front page of the newspaper. This um, academic research says this, front number one story on the evening news. And there's no deviation, there's no editorialization, it's purely straight in, okay? Well, they want uh, every journalist today, that's why journalists today, is, that's why journalism is dead now, because it's just, all it is, it's just, uh, uh, you know, if you're, if, you, if you're coming out of journalism college today, or you work in the mainstream journalism today what you are is a photocopier a xerox machine that's all you are you 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 have no other function in this life you are a a a a, a xerox machine made out of proteins amino acids uh, a nervous system and a pulmonary system and uh, bits and bobs other vitamins and stuff like that and minerals that's what you are you are a you are, you are a, a, a Xerox machine that has a 78-year lifespan and your job is to just photocopy what the government and academics tell you and put it on the front page or on the evening news. That's what journalism is today, mainstream journalism. And they, that, so they've successfully done that with every journalist. No, There's no one with intelligence involved in journalism today. They just don't exist. If they do, they're in mainstream, uh, alternative journalism. <clears throat> now... They want not only the journal, they've got the journalists doing that now. The next thing is, and they've got the civil servants doing that now. The next thing they have to do is do it to the people. So the people do not, like, they want a situation. That's why they're taking your sports and everything away from you. They want a situation where you wake up in the morning and go, government policy today says that we can only have one and a quarter teaspoons of sugar in my tea 
rather than my usual tea too. And then the wife goes, and also government policy today said that the rain drop, the rainfall would be 0.1 inch. Oh, that's very interesting. Also government policy today said that we shouldn't be using blue wallpaper because it's bad for the, that's what they want. You're not, every conversation is dominated by government policy. And those lizard-brained nutjobs that you all know, who are glued to the television every time their Rona stats and everything comes on, they are model citizens. And if, if, they, if they eventually, if, they, if those other people are saying, yeah, yeah, no, you know, I don't know if that's fully true, or it doesn't really, or if they go, oh, really, they said 500 people died of the corona today. Oh, I don't really care. I'm not really interested in that. You know, then they say something like, I'm interested in something else. Well, that interest in something else is now conspiracy theory, is now far right, is now enemy to state. And that will eventually extend to things like your hobbies. What's your hobby? Oh, I'm building a model train set. That's far right, enemy to state. What's your hobby? Oh, I play, you know, I, I play tennis. That's far right, enemies of the state. Unless you're playing in a, a, a government controlled state te te tennis court. What's your hobby? Oh, I like pa watercolor painting. Uh, that's far right, you're an enemy state. What's your hobby? Oh, well, I like cooking. That's far right, enemy to state. They want you, anyone who's not, not fully devoted to non-stop, endless engagement, transference, photocopying, uh, in a conscious or a verbal sense, of government policy is an enemy of the state. They want absolute droids. That's what they want. And what's happened is, coming back to the beginning of this video, is that the ones who are, like the picture on the thumbnail of this video, they have, and, there's not, and that's an extreme case, there's millions of them, have fallen madly in love and you will never get them back. They're now, they don't even remember that there are lots of young people out there who are in their 30s who went to festivals like Glastonbury and Conchinello, where it's called in America, when they went to see Slain in Ireland and were rolling in the mud at, at two years ago watching uh, Metallica with 100,000 people around them all rolling it beside them, sweating and touching them. And they don't even remember that now because they've fallen completely in love with social distancing and, and wearing 10 masks and they're madly in love with that. And that's just like the just like the woman. If you're in a relationship with a new woman, and she does she, she if she re, if you want to know if she really loves you, she won't even remember the previous fellas. Won't even she won't even think about them because she's in love with you, and that's what they're like. So again, they're teenage girls. These men who are in love with the new norm, and just like the father whose sixteen year old daughter falls in love with the dirt bag down the road, and he's like, oh Jesus, not him screaming and shouting at her won't make her stop seeing it'll only make her fall more madly in love with him because the average male today i mean look at the look at the government ministers look at the ones in Ireland they put in front of the tv they're little girls they're teenage girls all smitten mm, government you know policy mm. they're like this they, they, this there's lo that's what many irish men are like today and if you uh if you say to them, these fuckers, these fuckers are a bunch of ruining, wrecking your life, get, open your business up, how dare you? I'm in love with Neffet. That's what I like. I'm in love with Bill Gates. I'm in love with science. Don't take my love away. That's because the, the, that's the average male today is, a, is perpetually for the rest. You know, the first thing was to make them 14-year-old boys for the rest of their lives. Alan Roth, God bless him, always made that point was to make them children, male, male boys for the rest of their lives. Now the males today are teenage girls for the rest of their lives. I'm so in love with the system. Don't you take my system away from me? And it's like they don't, but they, they, the new one, the, the, the cheese heads don't remember the old one. So you go back to them and say to them, "Don't you want to go back to when things were not locked up and all that?" And they go, "Oh no, I, I love my, I love my hazmat suit when I'm going to." See Coldplay, and it's the nearest person is five meters. I mean, so we so forget all now, right? So the best then we have the semi sentient ones are going, you know. Well, it's 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 a relationship, you know. You know, I, I'm with someone, you know. Better than being alone. Well, they're the ones that you can win over, and you're not going to win over by shouting at them. What you're going to win over them more is by your own charisma, saying to them, saying to them. This is this way it is. This is like what what's going on, 
uh, but not shouting or lecturing to them. So I can always say to people, you know, how do you wake people up? Well, you can't. But how can you influence where they might wake them up? You say something like, Jeez, the lockdown's a year now, but I guess they had to do it. And says, yeah, I know, I know. I'm still mad about Sweden not having a lockdown. But Sweden didn't ha Sweden had, didn't have a lockdown? No, they didn't have a lockdown. But I heard they had much higher death rates, and you go, I looked it up, and they don't really have any more. What do you mean, don't really have any more? So, did you see that new show on Netflix? That's how you wake him up. Suddenly, his, his need, or her need, to defend the orthodoxy has been stopped by you changing the subject. And then, when they have reached a point where the, the hormones and the emotions to defend the orthodoxy are switched off or nullified, then, then they will find people like John Waters, you know, then they will find those kinds of people who will express it in a new kind of way of thinking for them. And then others out there who can show them things. That can bring them into consciousness regarding this stuff. And that's why it's so important to not be antagonistic towards these people. Because the average male today is a 14-year-old girl who's smitten with the 15-year-old the thug down the street. And the 15-year-old thug down the street is the new normal. And any father's had a teenage girl who's fallen for some dirtbag will tell you the best thing to do is to stand back and she'll grow out of it, if she can grow out of it. And if she fucks her own life up, you, you couldn't do anything about it. It was just what it was just her destiny, and it's unfortunate. And uh, there's, a, there's a, you know, there's a lot there. There's a lot there to take in today. But it's, you know, I think the thing is it's to strip things down to their very simple, fundamental, basic thing. Okay. So that's why, you know, I had someone say the other day, you know, you're really good in videos, but you lose me when you talk about gods and, and stuff like that and mythology. And what I'm trying to explain to you is mythology isn't myth. Mythologies are the truest truths of all. They have just been stripped down into parables and into truisms that are conveyed through, the, through storytelling. But they're still, they're still a phenomenal roadmap to the human experience. And when you have a monomyth and you can, can attach your own life or the life of society even as a macro myth to a, a, a part of destiny or history or a story or a theory or a, a parable. This is one of the reasons they don't want you, they don't want you involved. They, they're trying to stop you from conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories lie very much in the concept of imagination. So for instance, if you, if you had a conspiracy theory where you believe that like... Uh, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of things, right? Uh, uh, no, 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 I, this is a conspiracy I don't believe, but it's it's a great one for imagination. The thing, the one that Paul Paul McCartney was replaced, right? So you might sit there going, oh, well, you know, people point out that he's a different bone structure. And you can say, oh, that's because he got a car crash and things like that, or he just changed, you know, and all that kind of thing. But then you could look at, or if you have an imagination, you'll say, yeah, but if you listen to the bass playing on Don't Let Me Down and compare it to Taxman or Rain, He's, he's not a good he's, the, 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 the new Paul McCartney is not a good bass player as the old Paul McCartney now I know it's, I'm not saying he was replaced but I'm just saying to me the reason why he's not as, he, he wasn't as good towards the end is because he, he was a stoner but uh, you know there's, there's pre and there's pre and post marijuana uh, Paul McCartney bass playing and that's the, that's what explains the change but that has, me going to that level I was, a, was imagination you know there's a, I imagined it like I thought about it what would make him play bass like that on rain or on taxman and he can't and on a lot the, the, you know on songs like you know don't let me down it's, he's a one note plucker you know and that's why imagination brought me to that point well they don't want you anything to do it they're, they're going to start banning imagine this is why they're going after things like Pepe Le Pew and Roald Dahl and uh, Dr. Seuss they don't want children having imagination in fact that was one of the reasons I know they were waiting to have a go at J.K. Rowling J.K. Rowling's book the Harry Potter books are very much about children having powerful imaginations so they go out they've gone after the, the horror claiming she's a bigot and stuff like that it won't work of course but in her case but 
they, they, they'll do the same thing with Lord of the Rings. They'll say it's Islamophobic or it's uh, it's racist, you know, because everything is good about it is white and stuff like that. And I'm sure it's, I mean, that's, that's it's you know, it's talking about a, a mythical ancient Europe. You know, this is what, you know, this is what, it's not, you know, there's nothing, ra I know black people who love H.P. Lovecraft. H.P. Lovecraft had a very nice thing to say about Irish people. It will never stop me from loving his work and this kind of thing. And it's because you separate the art and the story from the the political agenda. But they don't want people having a... What, what this thing attacking J.K. Rowling and attacking can, all the cancer culture stuff and attacking the comedians. They want no imagination in anyone. So everyone is just... You know, you, if you had a child... You know, here's... This is one... This is another one you can take to the bank. If you have a child, a son or a daughter... And you want them to grow up to be a good, to be a successful person in life that has a meaning and a vital life. Introduce them to mainstream journalists and say to them, you see your man that works for the New York Times? You see your woman who works for the Guardian? You see that fucker over there who works for the BBC? You see this one here who works for the Irish Times? You see this one who works for Le Monde? You see that one there who works for Die Spiegel? You see that one over there who works for the European Business Review? You see that one who works for the Wall Street Journal? Observe them, look at them, and do everything in your life that, that's the reverse and opposite and the antithesis of what they do, live, exist, and are. And your children will have a great, meaningful life. Look at the journalists, the mainstream journalists today. Look at them. Look at them and loathe. Because you, what you're looking at is the future of humanity expressed through people who have no imagination, no honour, and they're they're so devoid of honor that the average the average newspaper journalist today you couldn't sacrifice them to the pagan gods because the pagan gods wouldn't want them and would take your sacrifice as an insult. Remember that life is made up of very simple things, even when they're extrapolated to enormous concepts. At the end of the day, we're all a mythology that relates to some ancient story and this is why I'm never st I'm always pushing the work of Joseph Campbell it's so important and uh, Carl Jung because you and everything you're involved in now is a monomyth and an archetype but if you're a pagan like me you also have a strong belief in magic and magic is the ability to hack this matrix to change the material world through what imagination Hence, the tribal gathering. Hence, the parallel society. Hence, why we, I continue to make these videos when I could be doing many other things in my life. Take care of yourselves and love you all.